All right, everyone. Thank you, Lucius Johnson. I see that you said yes. Thumbs up. Those of you watching right now, we're getting ready to go live. We're behind the scenes right now. We got a special guest coming on this evening. We're going to talk about our football like we always do. We're going to talk about doing whatever it takes 2019. And we have a special guest, Skip Thompson, give you a little bit of preview. I mean, this guy has done some amazing things and some big things in the world through film and production and helping big brand names like Kraft and McDonald's, Taco Bell. I mean, doing commercials and helping them uh, strategize and get some results with their brand. Really big stuff this evening. So we're just behind the scenes. Get ready to go live. Um, go ahead and share. I've hit some of you up on Facebook. Keith has too. Go ahead and share it with as many people as you can. And uh, we'll get started. All right, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Whatever it takes. 2019. We are here live. I'm excited tonight. Amped up. Had a super long day working in the community right here in Las Vegas. However, it's never a dull moment. Okay. I love the energy that God places inside of me for these evenings. Um, I get an extra burst of energy towards the evening. I felt like going home, going to sleep because I've been going hard. I got back in the gym a little bit, trying to do a little bit of something. I was out for four months. Keep looking at me right now. This is my coach right here you know and i fell off a little bit but i'm still doing whatever it takes to make it 2019 that's what it's about right so if you're watching right now and um you're chiming in we want you to join us grab something to drink chill out with us go on facebook share what you got with us share with others we're going to be interviewing someone very special this evening but before we do you know that we got to get started on some football conversation it's football season keith so we got to do some talking about football we ready for you no we ready for you we want you to learn the game you want they want me to learn the game so not, not just football but basketball Basketball has basketball already started too. now. Basketball. NBA college, co the college only basketball thing, is about to start, so you need to get into it. I got to get into it. The only thing that I know about basketball is I've been watching this Westbrook because, you know, I'm a Westbrook fan. I love OKC. That's all I was with was OKC, and now he's, you know, jumped over to, what, the Rockets? So now what? Now I got to follow Westbrook. That's all I know about basketball. That's all I got. Or well, what about football? <laughs> Raiders and the Saints, baby. Well, That's come all on, I'm talk doing. about Raiders it. and the Saints. You, you ready, Raiders and the Saints. About, you know, talk about. I'm the excited Saints. for the. I like what the Saints are doing right now. I like their energy. I like what they're doing. Um, everything's happening for a reason, and I know it. I'm not all that great with football. I don't <laughs> profess to be. Um, and I'm just honest with you all. I'm sure, ladies, if you're watching, some of you are in the football, some of you are not. I've been in football because of Keith, and I've been learning, although I've always liked the Raiders because the women in my family were Raider fans. My auntie passed away, grandmother, they were all Raiders fans. So I'm carrying that torch. And I just so happen to be right here in Las Vegas. So it's perfect. Yeah, all right, well. <laughs> I, I love it. Football is like beside me my parents you know football was my everything i'm not gonna lie to you football basketball um I, that's that was like my girlfriend you know so uh i'm a washington redskin fan i, I try to tell everybody I'm, I'm not a hate i'm not gonna get on the bandwagon like some of my other friends like my cousin michael gardner i know you're on that ready i know you i know you've been watching this so i'm, I'm talking about you right now but he on 
he was always a Dallas Cowboy fan, like some other mother friends. Uh, so, but this this year, I'm not just on a wagon just because the Saints are winning now. But I told y'all when it was August, when we was talking, uh, when, when I told you the football season was about to start, I knew, and I was, I know Washington wasn't going nowhere. So I said I was gonna be. This was the year that I'm I'm pulling for LSU. They're doing good. I can't wait for the Alabama game. That's something that's going to be really special. And also, I'm pulling for the Saints. I, I put my money down. I'm ready to take it to the Super Bowl. So for the eyes, I'm waiting on my money. I, I'm just telling y'all right now. So y'all better get on the bandwagon. Go get that little chain. Put it on the side. Get the odds. You can make a little money because the Saints going to win it all this year. They're not going. They, it's not going to happen with what with, with, with they had to go through for the situation with the Rams and what I found out the referee why because I this if this is true I found out the referee the reason we he didn't call that that flag because that man played for the Rams you know so so like so so that's why I was so upset and now I learn that's what happened you know so um but since we have something so special today I'm not gonna really much talk too much about this. T- so, um, my friend Mr. Skip, is he ready? Okay. I'm ready to roll. Since we ain't, so we ain't had to waste no time, I'm ready. To st- I'm ready to get the party started. You know, this is his special day, special night. This is his. So let let's get the party started. So if y'all can get in touch and get in, see if he ready. I'm ready to roll. Okay, I'm- those of you watching right now, we're gonna introduce a special guest this evening. Remember, if you want to call in, this is a live conversation. You can share this afterwards with people. We have had some amazing shows. We allow God to work on this show, and you never know what's going to happen and what you needed to hear this evening. So as we get into this show this evening, if you want to call in, you want to talk to the person that we're interviewing, you want to say something to us live in the studio, give us a call, 775 964 eight seven six four and you also can see it on our facebook feed we'd love to hear from you audience call in give keith a shout out the show you know join us all of our fans and the people that are that support us right here in las vegas we are coming live out of las vegas wednesday evenings 7 p.m and tonight we're on to someone special so I want to do a drum roll and I'm going to give you a little introduction and I mean small introduction because this guy has done some amazing things. Okay, this evening we're going to be uh, introducing to you uh, the world renowned Mr. Skip Thomas. But before we bring him in, I want you to know this is an international Emmy award winning commercial television and film director and producer. This guy has worked with Fortune 500 companies such as Kraft's Food, McDonald's, Taco Bell, AT&T, TCBY, along with high profile people that you may know, Mr. Bill Clinton and Mike Huckabee. Dozens of leading healthcare organizations have all turned to this man to help them produce results through film, production, strategic planning, and media. On top of all those gifts that God has blessed him with, he also has a gift of song and video. He actually is one of our first contestants in a contest that we rolled out a few weeks ago. And we are actually looking, we'll tell you about it later, you know, at the end of the show, Sam and I will jump in, give you all the details about how you can get involved in this contest or someone that you may know that you feel is a great fit for this amazing contest that we have going on. But right now, we're going to open up this conversation. Skip, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Hello. Hello. And, and Keith, thank you both for having me on, and God bless you guys for the effort and the people you're touching and raising up. And I'm very humbled by uh, that uh, introduction. It's been quite a, a long career, and uh, it led to um, what 
really is the purpose. And you know, I love the name of this show with you know, uh, you know whatever it takes to su for success and to succeed because you think you do all the right things in life and suddenly it takes a turn with health or whatever in Keith's case and his story that's amazing. And even though all that sounded great that you talked about to you, it really was a, it got to a point where you really ask, what is, you know, why am I here? What's the legacy I'm going to leave? Is it stuff? Is it, I got a big ego or got a brass, you know, t plate on a wall somewhere that everybody or pigeons can poop on a statue <laughs> that I'm in. <laughs> just another place but no it's there's something else and it took me a long time in my life to figure out what that is and it's a divine awakening it's a spiritual kind of awakening and um it's um uh, i'm happy to talk a little bit about it but i want to say first keith the saints you know i got three daughters they all been in in uh, louisiana and i tell you what they're in high heaven i'm in mm -hmm. arkansas right now down here and of course you were mentioning great south uh, East Conference teams, Alabama and LSU, which is also down there, and they're a big supporters of that. The, now, where's Arkansas? Well, <laughs> well, I, well I was in where, college. I where? played against Arkansas. You know? Yeah. Did you? Yes, Did, sir. Yeah. Well, well, we uh, we we're not doing so good. We're at the bottom of the barrel right now. But uh, my brother played with Arkansas back in the Lou Holtz days, and. And uh, and the whole sports side of uh, has been a big part. I'm the oldest of five boys and Navy, and we grew up in California. And, and Dad ended up saying, "We're going to not raise five kids in California. We're going to take them back to Arkansas." I thought that was the end of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I uh, was on a daddy scholarship, and he kind of paid for college as long as I'd study pre med until I got mm. to my senior year. And you, again, whatever it takes to succeed. And so the question, you know, is really what, how do you define success? Is it That's stuff? It. Is it money? Is it fame? Is it what is it? And, and or is it just find, fulfilling your purpose so that you leave a legacy that is richer than money and stuff can replace? That's right. And I think it, it takes, you know, and, I, and, and that's a God thing. It's a connection. And so for me, I went through four years of pre-med and, and, and all. And, and I came to a place where... Um, you know what am i doing and so I, I went back and gave my dad the car keys he said i said look i'm not doing this and i'm gonna do something else he said what's that and he was a military officer and, and I, he said and i said well i'm gonna whatever it is it's gonna be my mistake and he goes well good for now on you pay for it and i thought that's the only way i'd have it Boy, like, oh. but uh i you know you 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 you, you have to take make risk and whatever it takes and sometimes god puts changes in your path i was they always say you know that you probably heard it and said it how do you make god laugh and that's telling your plans that's right and sometimes you know certain things show up and you go why and then it opens up new blessings and you guys are touching people's lives keith i know your career and so forth and i'm really touched by uh, uh, what happened and, and 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 what you're doing now and you're touching people in a huge way so that's uh man that's a of uh of the biggest accolade you could get in sports so can i applaud that buddy yes, yes thank, thank you you know what skip we talk about doing whatever it takes and you're right the success part how do you define it well here on this show what we define as success is getting back up it's the bounce back you know it's not giving up when it's easy to give up and you don't you keep pushing you do whatever it takes to succeed in that moment when you're down feeling depressed feeling like not doing much giving up but you don't give up you do whatever it takes to get back up even when you've been knocked down or circumstances in life took you on a different path or a route but you chose to get back up and get back on that path and not give up Mm, that's beautiful and so 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 true the um, you know I didn't know what I was going to do um, when I left that kind of vision of being a doctor and going to med school and I was in the theater and I picked up a guitar because it was kind of a, a way for me to do therapy and, and, hmm. and uh, it was, instead of meditation or something was to write songs and and meet girls too back when I was young and had long hair and I thought I could do Kenny Loggins and <laughs> you know, Bob Marley and Prince and, and uh, Johnny Cash. I thought I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, learn all this stuff. And uh, <laughs> and then I wanted to write stuff. So music became a big piece of that. 
and seeing how audiences, how it could shape and, and impact an audience. And then the theater did the same thing. And I thought, how can I make a living and do things? And that's where um, being behind the camera and telling stories. So if I'm really anything, I'm just a storyteller. Hmm. And be it music or, or be it uh, film and television, I love to tell stories. And I love to reach an audience, you know, on a body, mind, spirit, soul level. Yes, you do so, a good job with it, too. And one yeah. of the things that I noticed uh, reading through your bio and your history that I love is that you bring the heart out of the audience. And I picked up on that over and over as I was reading, as I looked at some of the documentaries and commercials that you've done. I actually can see and feel your humbleness, mm -hmm. your heart mm -hmm. space. And it's not about... Um, the glitz, the glamour, the ego with you, and that shines out so loudly through yeah. your work and what I've seen. And I want to tee up a video, Sam. You know, one of the videos that you've done has a unique story behind this egg. And I think it's a really good story to tell our audience right now that are watching. If you're watching this evening, God talks to you in mysterious ways. And this story what? is really unique. You may go ahead and start it before you show it and tell you. Tell us a little bit and then the, we're going to um, show it. Okay, well, I was... After I went back and to get a job, I went to work at a hospital. My job was setting up slide projectors, and the hospital decided they wanted to do a TV commercial. And um, and on and so what I I had a, a dream, and this wasn't me coming up with it. I woke up, I wrote it down, but I'd never done a TV commercial before, and the, and I was a low man on the totem pole, and so other people got to do the more glamorous stuff. And so I said, well, just let me do this one commercial. And when I explained that it all it involved was an egg rolling mm -hmm. in motion, and I, and I won't tell you the end of it because there's only one other piece, but uh, I was in the administration room and they all looked at me and there was a, a pregnant pause for about three minutes and finally one of them said, does he have a back door to the pharmacy? Are you serious? An egg? And I'm going, mm -hmm. that's it. And but that that commercial put me um, launched me in uh, one best of show in the Addies. It won the John Muir Film Festival, the Houston Film Festival. It won two uh, Addies in the in the District Five of Texas area. It won first place American Catholic Hospital. And suddenly, people, other hospitals, and clients started coming to me for commercials. And so I started written, and it kind of forced me into business. So um, I, I can. Um, yeah, it's which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, it was the egg for me in this, in this <laughs> situation. <laughs> Go ahead, enjoy. Life is so fragile. And with the passage of each moment, we're constantly reminded just how fragile life can be. Advancements in the treatment of heart disease have provided possibilities where before there was little hope. When tragedy strikes, you want the best of medical care for your family and loved ones. St. Vincent Infirmary, we're more than just a hospital.
talk about the problems. I think there's a lot of people that need help. Right, homeless and women in transition. We've got drugs, we've got some of the gang activity. She kept me and she tells me all this stuff about When you have like elderly people and they can't, they can't take care of themselves. Whatever they need to do to get you food and shelter for as long as it takes. They were people that were dehydrated. They needed somebody to help them get to a hospital. They were going blocks and blocks, crossing city streets, crossing busy streets to try to get to a playground. <laughs> if you think you got a problem, and then you come here. What is this? I guarantee you leave here thinking, my world's pretty great right now. All right, here we go. That is amazing. I love the different clips from different scenes. Where were you along your career path when this was uh, put together? I was, it was probably in the 90s. I was really, it was blowing up. We were one of the fastest growing companies in Arkansas. We were ranked top five fastest growing companies two years in a row. They did a, um, American Express came out and did a, uh, a story on called your a magazine that they send to all the American Express and they did a cover story on my partner and myself. And, um, I, you know, again, whatever it takes for success, I thought I was doing it. Hmm. And I was, you know, sometimes working seven days a week, 16 hours a day, house, cars, all the stuff. And I thought, well, this is success. And, um, I got to a point where the more success and rubbing up with shoulders and people that I thought I needed to be associated with and seen in places and um, I had a void. I mean, I had a, a real spiritual crisis. I thought, I, you know, I went out in the woods and I, I, I asked God, I said, if this is it, you can have it. I don't, I don't want to go on. I, this is, I felt a void that was, um, the most intense, depressing, hopeless place I could have ever been because I thought I did everything right. And by all measures, you'd look at it and go, wow, you had a great career. What a success. No. I mean, yeah, I learned a lot and I'm grateful for every bit of it. But I prayed and I asked God, I said, well, if this isn't it, because I was in a dark place and considering some really dark things because I thought I'm not, I'm, I don't want to go on like this. And I asked God for an answer and, and um, I didn't get an answer, but I got a question <laughs> <laughs> and the question, cause I had a couple of young kids and stuff. And, I, and the question was, you know, what is the legacy you want to leave your friends and your kids and family? Wow. And I thought, okay, that changes everything. And that's when I moved to Sedona, Arizona, I, the marriage, the cars, the house, everybody really, I mean, honestly, there was a uh, intervention uh, discussed um, by my wife and now ex-wife about he lost his mind. And because I was like, no, everything's changing. I'm, I can't go on doing this. And um, a lot of, a few people understood, my parents understood and supported and um but a lot of folks just thought you know god what's what got into him and i went to sedona lived there for 12 years didn't know anybody nobody knew me um which was a good thing and if i thought if i end up greeting people at walmart i'll be dang good at it and i'll make i'll make people i'll brighten people's day and whatever comes and then i got involved because of my ancestry with um uh, uh, cherokee i wanted to connect with the indigenous tribes there in the hopi and the navajo and the havasupa in the bottom of the grand canyon and then i got involved with the mayans and the kogis out of south america and hundreds of tibetans in japan and and the lakotas and on and on and they started gatherings and talking about the 2012 what was coming in 2012 wow which the prophecy and so there was over a hundred different spiritual leaders from all around the world that got that that brought together a gathering 
to talk about the end of the Mayan calendar. And it wasn't like Hollywood, oh, it's an apocalypse and the world's going to end. Mm -hmm. But the world was going to end as we know it. And what that meant was that the veil would be lifted. The consciousness of people, as if it's a spiritual awakening, people would start to see things differently. And it was going to be hard for a lot of people. Wow. And the deceit, the lies, the corruption, if you look around, the paradigms in this world are breaking down. Be it the government, the political, a lot of even even organized religions, the pharmaceuticals, the, I mean, on and on, the corporate, the financial side of things. Uh, and people are very, at, you know, at dis, I call it diseased. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they're, and, um, and they need hope. And so what do they need to look on to? And I think that's, you know, to, that they can grasp and hold on to that's real substance. And I think that's a connection to God, great spirit. Right. And what I learned from the indigenous tribes was, was that what they were talking about it was was the same things that the biblical, you know, the scriptures were talking about. Wow. And you were and, able to uh, make a connection. And got, yes. And now with science proving some of the things of ancient traditions and spiritual wisdom, and I've got a, a film right now on Gaia TV, called Sacred Journey of the Heart. It won a bunch of film festivals and, and so forth, but it's basically how science is proving the spiritual foundations have been correct all along. The power wow. of prayer, you know, in ceremony and so forth. So I did a documentary on that, and that's probably one of the last things I did in Sedona before I moved back to Arkansas. And uh, But the return of the ancestors, I did a little clip and i think you've got a video please. yeah we'll get ready to uh, cue it up next and it was a um it, it was about as if god or spirit said thank you for everybody coming forth and honoring the sacred gathering and the fire represents with the indigenous tribes a new beginning a birth a transformation you put it in and it transforms and goes to heaven so a lot of times you'll say prayers and you'll offer them to the fire and they'll burn and, and or things you don't like and you release it to the fire. But the fire for for two and a half weeks, that fire would not go out. It was maintained by a firekeeper night and day around the wow. clock. And uh, it was it was a place to, you know, kind of like an altar. And yeah. um so it was, but that that's what this uh, this one okay. piece we can. But if you have questions, I'll, I'll let you go. So what we'll do, audience, this is amazing. We're going to queue up the video. We'll show a little bit of it. We'll come to a stop. And then you guys can call in, ask questions, um, anything that you want to comment on what you've heard tonight on the show. We'll come back on after the video. In the spring of 2009, something happened in northern Arizona. Was it merely just a gathering of ancient wisdom keepers from around the world? Or because it was at the request of a Mayan high priest, as part of the fulfillment of the Mayan prophecy, was it something much greater? As we approach what the Mayans refer to as Year Zero, the ending of the Mayan calendar in 2012, their prophecy and prophecies from many cultures from around the world speak of a shifting of the ages, dramatic changes to our world and humanity, prophecies we are witnessing coming true today. One thing is certain, the return of the ancestors gathering was truly historic. It required individual strength, courage, and the dedication from hundreds of individuals who knew the time was now to bring forth these messages to humanity and to help light our path in the coming times. And so it is through this message we wish to offer our love and our gratitude to you for your gifts, your trust, your faith, and your determination. Thank you all.
Skip, that was amazing. I actually have a Native American background. My mom's side is Mexican. My dad's side was black. And our family's last name traces back to Corona, which one of, was, was one of the original Aztec settlers. And so this was amazing to watch and hear a little bit before the show about your ancestral background. And isn't it amazing how God will use situations to just prompt us and guide us into the path he wants us to take so that he can get a message across, you know? And so that was amazing. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, you, Tia. Yes. And everybody out there, all of us have ancestral roots and, and, and spiritual wisdom that comes from our ancestral roots that never some of it got passed up and we really need to reconnect to that um it's it's very important very powerful we need that as a foundation for what these days ahead i believe and reconnecting to uh this earth and god and and, uh, and one another exactly um keith do you have any questions for skip well i was just listening man i'm trying to listen and learn um yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot. Thank you so much. Um, don't don't be shy. Continue talking, cause I I, I want to learn. You know, I I want to learn. Like I told, I, I was shot in the head, man. And it it took a while for me to really to comprehend and understand. And um, that's why sometimes I'm not ashamed. At one time, I was I was scared to talk to people and and um, just you know trying to comprehend and understand just. Um, it, it was it was tough. So when I listen and learn new things from other people, I don't care what race, you know. That's why I tell people I don't care, and um, what what age, old or young, because I've been around with kids, you know. Like I said, I, I sometimes I used to be scared to talk about that, but I guess because I was so shame, you know, because I couldn't say or comprehend and understand at times, you know. Do, because of my brain, but I'm better now, I'm wiser now, I'm a little more mature, but I, I'm still, I know I need to, I need, I need more guidance. So, so I, I just think everything happens for a purpose, a reason for this situation just to happen today. You know, it, it's a blessing just to listen to your story, you know, so I, I want to pass this on to other people so they can hear and comprehend, you know, when I, when I think about this, I mean, I, I, it, it helps me, you know. You know, I, I get excited, you know. So I'm excited. Um, it's a blessing that we're able to comprehend. You know, well, not comprehend, just talk to you for the comprehension for me. So it's it's good because my words are. I'm, I'm getting better now. I can listen and understand because at, at times before I wasn't able to comprehend and understand what people was telling me so I was so frustrated but now that I'm here and you know it, it, it's a blessing for me I'm just excited I'm just just to listen to what you're talking about your story and it's a blessing I, I can't wait to, to to brag about this <laughs> <laughs> well can I jump in here Keith um, I, you know I don't know what you know as far as before the accident you had and so forth and but you're your beautiful ability to talk and communicate through your heart and to other people's heart and maybe you had that before maybe not but it's really powerful and really beautiful and it's there's no mental need there's no words that's needed there's not just that follow that that funneling through of that light of god uh, through your heart and it really shines and comes through and i i really appreciate it. it's really an honor to get to connect with you uh through this hope to meet one day yes sir yes Thank skip you. we are both number one best-selling authors we'll have to get you a copy of our books i have a book called living on purpose with the purpose and it's so in alignment with what you were talking about earlier about god's purpose and legacy and so my journey has personally been living on purpose 
with a purpose. That means waking up every morning and being on purpose and intentional with the things that God uses me for and that I accomplish before I go to sleep every day. Sometimes it's around business and I actually happen to be in the line of helping people. I've been doing community development work for 25 years across the United States. Right here in Las Vegas, I work with several behavioral health programs, helping the owners and the leaders impact the communities that they are in. And my path that God has put me on, I actually grew up in rough situations in neighborhoods, in lack, in poverty, single mom raising us, you know, drugs, gangs. I grew up in it, but it didn't take me over because God had a purpose in all of that. And then with Keith, his book is called, I Never Would Have Made It Without You. And he actually, in that book, gives synopsis of his life and different times in his life where there was tragedy. And yet God sends someone on his path in the middle of that tragedy to help him through it. And so he said, I never would have made it without these people that God put in my path. His mom committed suicide during his first year of college. He lost his brother in a canal uh, down in New Orleans. And all this happened before he was shot in the head and his career was taken away. And then fast forward, Katrina happens. He has to get up and relocate his whole life. Then he goes through a divorce. So he's had tragedy after tragedy after tragedy and yet is able to stand, still smile, give God glory and do whatever it takes. So we'll have to get you a copy of our books. I believe that the synergy here today, God has definitely divinely put this time for this show. So whoever's watching this evening, this is all about getting back up doing whatever it takes, no matter where you are or what situation you're in right now. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you for sharing me that. I'd love to read it. Yes. Now, as we start moving into the last, you know, 20 minutes of the show, I don't want to skip talking about the amplifying truth. Where did that come from? Why do you say that? Like, what is that brand all about? And I know it's a nonprofit. So tell us about what you're up to with that nonprofit. Why'd you call it Amplifying Truth? And what are some of the projects you're up to right now? Wow. Um, thank you for asking about that. And, and again, it, it goes right in line with um, with all the blessings I've had from skills and talents and experiences and what I've learned regret none of it and grateful for all of it i got to a point like what can i do to help humanity or help another individual or lift people up and some projects i did over the years did that and i thought well what better way than having a nonprofit that i could go out and really be the voice for the voiceless and and um and you know help people share the you know their positive difference they're making on the front line in the communities in the world and with these tools that we have the ones we're using right now and motion pictures and music and you know we've got the most powerful distribution means for international connection and uh, that you know 10 20 years ago that was not possible and um, so to be able to use that to inspire people to step out and do something to make a difference so i'm telling stories and using my film and music and so forth as to tell rescuing um, 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 these kill pen horses, mm -hmm. the opium addiction, doing a lot with that, kids learning music and, and uh, with the uh, symphony and buying instruments. Um, I've got, I mean, on and on, you, you name every kind of aspect of, uh, of an activity, um, you know, from homeless veterans, uh, you know, I, some of it's, I get a little bit of funding, some of it I, I don't and I fund it myself. I put I, right now I'm sitting in a motor home I uh, have and I put together uh, an editing suite and all my camera gear so I can travel. I've been to Southern California and to Miami do, working on projects and I will um, go and film and then pull up and edit at a camp or on the beach and, and, wow. and upload it with this technology. So that's the life and 
amplifying truth. The name was, I'm not saying what is truth. I'm just amplifying those that are making a difference that, uh, and letting other people say, does this resonate to you as a truth, a purpose, as you said, uh, something that may inspire you to uh, pursue the legacy you want to leave. I love that. But thank you I for asking. It. Yeah, I love how you're saying that you pull up. And I actually looked more into the nonprofit and what you were up to. And I love how you're shining the light on people who are truly making a difference. So that right there will be used by God to inspire other people to wake up and live in your purpose to wake up and utilize the time that you have on this earth to make a difference and find out what you were personally designed to get done on this earth. And so that's amazing. One of the things I wanted to share with our audience is that we actually are launching a contest. Well, we launched it and it's called songs with a purpose we actually are doing a live event right here in las vegas on december 3rd which is giving tuesday and leading up to that we've launched an actual contest where we're merging together and looking for hip-hop christian artists country and country Christian artists, we're merging all of that together to make a positive force and change on this earth using our platform right here out of Las Vegas. We have a platform called His Hop Radio Network right here. We're live in studio. Those of you that want to be a part of this contest, we really want you to go look at this screen, go share it, click and get into the contest. It's $50 to get into the contest. You're going to send us a small clip of a sound bite of your song, your music, what you want to get produced. We have three categories that you get to win in. And the categories are a combination of possibly getting the labor to recognize you and pick you up as an artist some funding through a nonprofit to help some of your uh, music projects and things like that to get up and get off the ground. We are also having some wisdom here that is going to be given to you through consulting from producers, people in the music industry that have actually done music projects and has that wisdom on how to get these things off the ground. I think Sam may have a few things to share with us about this contest. I'm gonna pull in Sam, our partner right here in Las Vegas. Hey, hey, yeah, it's gonna be off the hook, y'all. So you definitely wanna come out. You'll get some free advertisement right here on the His Out Radio Network. Uh, we'll put you on our app. We'll give you a full page in our digital mall, and uh, we'll just help you get some exposure. So make sure you download the His Out Radio app if you want more information. The links and the rules and all the information is right there. His Hop Radio in your app store. Go and share it. You know, as I look at the contest, I think about the youth ministries, the music ministries inside of churches and people that I know that do worship music. Also, um, some of my friends that are in the hip hop, I'm letting them know about it. This is the perfect platform for them to get exposure, to possibly be picked up by a label and to just be a part of giving back. The Giving Tuesday is a nationally recognized um, actual campaign that runs live on Facebook. Facebook matches some of the funds that are raised by nonprofits. So maybe Amplifying Truth needs to get on there for Giving Tuesday. But there are ways that people can get involved on Facebook. We're doing a house party right here live, a worship house party. Chris Miller will be there. Sam, Club, His Hop, myself, anyone else that wants to join us right here in Vegas. We got people coming in from Detroit that are going to be live in the house. We're hooking up the microphones and we're just going to get inspired and inspire people live on that day. You'll be able to click, donate. Part of the proceeds will be given to Darlene's nonprofit that is connected to the Sony Music 
uh, movement and label and they're looking for artists to possibly give back finances to to help them get some of these inspiring music projects off the ground so this is an exciting time to be involved and to be a part of what we're up to skip any last words you want to say to our audience that might be watching this evening encouragement some amplified truth that you might want to give to our audience well i just want to thank you and sam and keith uh for uh this this time together very special i'm glad to make this relationship and back on music i mean if people remember the movements of uh that whether you lived through them or it was history during the 60s and how the bob dylan the bob the you know um, you know bob marley and you know the woodstock and, and janis joplin and how all of that evolved to make a movement back then that was revolutionary in a sense well now there's a new opportunity to use music in that same because humanity needs it and so i think um, the last, that's the last and now it's really we've come full circle and it's time again for songs with a purpose to really impact and lift humanity up and unite us and uh, it's a beautiful tool music film so i applaud this content uh, I'm, I'm, ex I'm very excited to see how it goes yes if you're watching this evening anything that we've said we hope that it catches you where you are whether you're watching on your phone on facebook you're watching us through youtube if you're at home watching us you're watching us for a reason i believe in divine order and timing so something that was said tonight was for you join us here live every wednesday 7 p.m where we talk about doing whatever it takes to be successful to be successful and come out, bounce back, do something different, and not to give up. So go ahead. If you want to be a guest on this show, please, you can connect with Keith, myself, those of you that follow us on Whatever It Takes 2019, our Facebook page is available to you. Go ahead and download that app so that you can watch the replay on Fridays. We actually replay the shows. You can share this show and start a watch party. Go off and spread what was shared here this evening. Keith, you have anything? I just want to tell you again, Mr. Skip, thank you again um, for being on the show. And we don't mind if you want to come back again. <laughs> I love that. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. So thank you, everyone. Please feel free to go on and follow Skip Thomas on Amplified Truth. His Facebook is live and active. Follow him there. Go and see what he's up to. He's going to come back and enter his music and what he's up to into our contest. So don't wait. If you want to join the contest, go in and click. Sam, we're actually extending the date. So before we were telling everyone they had to have their music in by, I think, November 15th, we've had a few people join. Others who have told us it's too soon for them to get it done and get it on an MP3 into us. So we're going to expand it beyond into the new year. But you got to get it in because we're going to showcase some of you on December 3rd. We just will not announce the winner on December 3rd, honey, uh, December 3rd because we're going to actually expand some time for those of you that want to get involved and share it some more so you take the pressure off we're expanding the deadline for you to be able to enter the contest and get us your content so we hope that you enjoyed tonight's show doing whatever it takes right here live out of las vegas join us next wednesday 7 p.m <laughs>